Hi class, so what I want to do in this video here is walk you through um, hypothesis testing, but from a different angle. So in your previous lectures, I've talked about a five-step process for hypothesis testing using um, what's called like the uh, critical value approach. Um, here I want to show you what's called the p-value approach, and it's actually a little bit easier method um, when we use our graphing calculator. Okay, so first off, what is the p-value? So the definition of a p-value is in statistics, the p-value is the probability of obtaining results as extreme as the observed result of a statistical hypothesis test. And this is assuming that the null hypothesis is correct. Okay, so what the heck does that mean? Well, <clears throat> so first off, instead of looking up a number as we did in the critical value approach, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compute a probability. And what the probability we're gonna compute is, is look, we're gonna take this uh, sample. In our sample, we're going to look at the results from our sample. So in this this type of hypothesis testing, we're 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 looking at the means, and so our sample is going to produce some type of um, uh, uh, sample mean. Okay, our sample will produce some type of average, and what we'll do is we'll look at that average and say, hmm, should we have gotten that average, um, assuming that our the null hypothesis value is true, and we'll compute the probability that you would observe a value more extreme as that one. And the whole idea is this, the whole concept is this. If the p-value, this probability you compute is a small number, small number, what it means is that your statistically observed value, your sample mean probably didn't happen by chance. Um, and that means your null hypothesis is incorrect. Okay, so how to use a p-value? So you compare the p-value of the test with the level of statistics significance. So if you remember uh, the level of significance from our previous lectures is that alpha. And you just got to remember in hypothesis testing, there's two things we can do. We can reject the null hypothesis or we can fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if the p-value is less than the level of significance, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is greater than the level of significance, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now I have two examples picked out today. You'll see, I'll show you one where we reject the null, one where we fail to reject the null. But I have this fun saying that should help you remember. Um, and it goes like this. When the p-value is low, the null must go. What that means is you've got to reject the null hypothesis. And when the p-value is high, the null must fly, meaning you fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, this will make more sense when we um, get into the examples, okay? All right, so here's our first one here. And it goes like this. According to the Department of Transportation, the mean commute time in the United States is 26.1 minutes. All right. So that you can just Google. That's not a made up statistic. Um, so that's the mean at the average commute time of everybody in the country. OK, so an economist believes that the mean uh, commute time in New York City and the New York City area is higher. OK, that that's the claim that the person is making the economist. OK. Um, which I think makes total sense, right? Like uh, you think about commute times in New York City, they're, um, they're higher. So the keyword here that's giving away what type of test this is, is the word higher. So that tells me it's going to be a right-tailed test. So to test her claim, she samples 30 commuters and finds the mean commute time to be 33.2 minutes with a standard deviation of 15.8 minutes. Okay, and it says test the claim at the 0 0.05 level of significance. Okay, you're still going to use um, the uh, five-step process for this, okay? The first one is you're going to set up the test. So what average are we investigating here? What we're looking at is we're looking at the mean commute time in New York City area, not, not across the country because we already know what that is. So our null hypothesis will always be a statement of equality. We'll start with the assumption that that mean commute time in New York City area is the same as everybody else. And what we're looking to say is no way, no way. It's got to be greater than 26.1 minutes, okay? It has to. All right, the third thing you're going to do is select the level of significance. This will always be given, okay? You'll never have to figure this out on your own. It will always be given. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to compute the test statistic. Well, the good news is, um, is that your calculator will actually do this for you rather quickly. So we're going to go back to our calculator. And the button you're going to use is you're going to press the stat button. You're going to go over to tests. And the one you want is this second option called t-test right here, t-test. So under number two, t-test, you're just going to hit enter. 
And you're going to see there's two options. There's one when you're given raw data. That's what this data one is. I'm going to do an example of that next. The, the one you want for when you're given the summary statistics, when you're told what the mean and standard deviation is, is you're going to scroll over to stats. Okay, now you just have to plug in some data here. Mu sub zero, this right here is whatever value you have in the null hypothesis. So it's the assumed population mean, which is 26.1. X bar is your sample mean, which is 33.2. S sub X is your sample standard deviation, which is 15.8. N is your sample size, okay? And so my sample size here is 30 commuters. And if you look here, the next option, it says mu and then dash. This is what your um, uh, alternative hypothesis should be. So we're going to scroll down here, and we want to match it with our null hypothesis over here or excuse me, our alternative hypothesis, I'm sorry, alternative hypothesis, which is greater than. So I'm going to hit enter. And then you're just going to scroll down to calculate. And you're going to hit enter. <clears throat> this right here, this t is equal to, that's your test statistic. So it's 2.46. I think 2.461. Okay. Now you could go look up the critical value for this test and, and, and just like we did in the previous lecture, see if you uh, reject or fail to reject the null. But the next thing it says is compute the p-value here. All right, well, if you look right here, it says p is equal to 0 0.0100. So 0 0.0100. Okay, so now if you look back, okay, now we need to make in our fifth step here, we need to make a conclusion. And the conclusion we're looking at here is, is the p-value less than the level of significance? Well, look here. Is my p-value 0 0.01 less than 0 0.05? Yes. So we reject the null hypothesis here because the p-value is less than the level of significance. because 0 0.0100 is less than that 0 0.05. And there is evidence to suggest the mean commute time in the New York City area is greater than 26.1 minutes. Okay, notice what we're not saying here is we're not saying that the mean commute time is equal to 33.2 minutes. That's not what we're saying. All we're saying is, look, the, the, this evidence here suggests that the mean commute time in the New York City area is greater than the mean commute time for the rest of the country. I think that makes sense. All right, let's do another example. This one here um, where you have to input data so you can see a subtle difference here. All right, so according to the Department of Education, College students spend an average of 120 minutes watching online lectures each day during this corona quarantine. All right, an educational researcher at WCC wants to conduct to see a test, conduct a test to see if this value is different for WCC students. So when I say this value, what we're talking about is if this mean. Okay, so I'm not, the researcher's not saying, I think the mean is higher, I think the mean is lower. Again, that's not what the researcher's saying. Okay, just wants to see if it's different. Okay, so that sounds like a two-tailed test. To conduct the test, she samples 15 students and recorded how many minutes they spent watching online lectures each day. And here you're given the raw data. Okay, first then it says conduct the test at the 0 0.05 level of significance. Okay, now you'll notice the difference between this example and the previous example is that um, I gave you the summary statistics. In this example, what I did was I um, just gave you the raw data. And that's okay too. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take this data and you're gonna wanna plug it into your calculator. So I'm gonna hit the stat button and under number one for the list, under edit, I wanna edit the list. And up here, you wanna make sure it says L1 and you wanna go through the process of now plugging this data in. So forgive me while I go through this data and plug it in my calculator. 
So these are just the number of minutes that students at WCC are spending each day watching these online lectures. So I'm just going down each column. 140 minutes, 60, 65, 180, 165, only 40 minutes. All right, we're almost getting there. It takes a little while to plug this in. Oh, you can see I made a mistake. So after 40, it was 122. Fifty. Let me just see. I think I made a mistake above here. So 120, 115, 125, 125, uh, 90, 126, 140, 60, 65, 180, 165, 40, 122, 150, 121. 130, 100, and 95. And forgive me a little bit of a typo, the talk to 18 students here, not 15. My apologies. All right, so we have the, the data plugged in here. And this is great. Um, at this point, you can actually just jump right to your calculator to solve this here. Okay, so we're going to go through the, the same thing here. Okay. So first off, what are we looking at here? The mean we're looking at is the mean time WCC students spend watching online lectures per day. And what we're looking to see is we're going to start with a statement of equality. So we're going to assume that WCC students watch just as many minutes per day of videos as um, the rest of the country or the rest of the students. And what we're actually looking at here now, what we want to see is we want to test to see that it's not equal to, so I'm going to put not equal to 120, so that it's different. We're going to select the level of significance. It's still 0 0.05. And now the good news is to compute the test statistic, you're going to go back and you're, for hypothesis testing here, you're going to press stat. You're going to go over to tests and it's always going to be option number two. So I'm going to go to t-test. Now here what I have is I have my data plugged in. So I'm going to scroll over to data and I'm going to hit enter. All right, so you're going to have to re-put this stuff in, okay? All you're going to have to do is under mu sub zero here, you're going to have to put the, the value that you had in the null hypothesis, which is 120. Your data is under list one, that's great. Frequency, you're just going to hit one as well. And what you're going to do is you're going to change this to match the alternative right over here. So change it here. And then I'm just going to scroll down to calculate. And these are going to be your results. So what it's saying is my test statistic is this value right here, this negative 0.6013. So it's negative 0.6013. We're going to compute the p-value. You can see the p-value is right here. So it's 0 0.5556 when I round it. So now look at this p-value. Is this p-value greater than the level of significance? Well, up here, if the p-value is greater than the level of significance, we fail to reject the null. So our conclusion here is since the p-value is greater than the level of significance, because we see that 0 0.556 is greater than 0 0.05. We fail to reject the null. And what we're saying here is there's no evidence to suggest WCC students watch a different amount of online lectures each day. And when I say different amount, and it's in time. So you guys, are, it looks like we can't conclude just based on this sample that your average is any different than 120 minutes. So the big thing here is when you use your calculator, okay, take your p-value, this, this p right here. If it's less than the level of significance, reject the null. If the p-value is greater than the level of significance, you fail to reject the null. 
And as you can see, you know, using your calculator, it, it gives you the results really, really quickly. So these problems shouldn't take too long. It's just, you know, the conclusion. So if my funny saying helps, if the P is low, less than the level of significance, reject the null. If the P is high, fail to reject the level. If P is high, greater than the level of significance, fail to reject the null. All right, class, I hope this helps.